Welcome to a late review of Angels of Death, episode 3. Yeah, yeah, this video came out pretty late, but better late than never, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just actually got back from watching The Incredibles 2 movie. I gotta say, I actually like this one better than the first one, actually. It picks on some topics that the last one did, so I did enjoy it. But you're not here for my talk of Incredibles 2, you're here for my talk of Angels of Death. So they finally got off that floor, the grave floor, I like to call it, anyways, and they defeat the final boss. Well, the boss of that floor, anyways, and that boss name was Eddie. My original name was Edward, but he liked to be called Eddie. You know, throughout, from the last episode, Eddie had this strange presence. He was the child that was laughing creepily while trying to laugh like a creepy child to Rachel and Zach. He, and of course, he is the one, the one that put the graves there, and I guess he he's used to digging graves. So, the execution of this episode, in a way, it was good, but it was bad. Bad in a way where we don't understand much more of Zach. All we knew that knew about Zach was that he was someone that knew Rachel from the past. He would constantly say how much he fell in love with Rachel, and he believes in mutual, pure love, where you love someone and someone loves you in return. He believes that, you know, playing not one-sided kind of love. Unfortunately, he didn't get that in this episode. He probably never will with Rachel. And Rachel doesn't seem to know what, she knows what she wants, but she's kind of picky on how it goes out, I guess. So, apparently, yes, Eddie was one of made the graves and even built a beautiful coffin scenery area for Rachel and all that stuff. But however, despite him promising a nice, slow and painless, well, fast and painless, beautiful death, Eddie promised to Rachel, Rachel is still going for Zach and for one reason why. Something that might be a very key point within the series. And that is because Zach said he swear to God. So that's a very interesting thing coming. I even noticed without this whole entire show so far, Rachel seems to be a very extremely religional kind of person. You see her praying sometimes. She won't commit suicide because God won't like it. And plus, she's a very God kind of person. She would pray, and even when Zach said that, she kept repeating, you said you swear to God, you swear to God, to the point where even Zach's getting freaked out over it. Like, yes, yes, I, I swear to freaking God, I will kill you once we get out of here. So she has something to look forward to. So, question is, why she wants to kill herself? We don't know. But as I was watching through the opening, and I noticed something, that I should have analyzed the opening in the first place, like I usually do, but I didn't do it this time. I noticed someone's being hung in the opening. As it goes, a very flash pace, showing different random pictures, well, not random pictures, but hints of what the story's gonna be about. You see someone hanging themselves by a window. And then after the next scene, there's blood on the floor. So, there could be a theory that Rachel's already dead. And it's played some type of purgatory. Or it could be that she's done something in her past. Or she knows about something and she knows she has to die for it. So far, there's still a lot of theories up in the air. This episode itself, um, it was very simple, you know, easy going. Um, we understand that apparently it's going to be a, a pattern going to be out through this show. They go on the floor, they get some clues about something, then they'll fight the floor boss who will try to jog your memory of something. Then they'll go off and they'll probably kill the floor boss or the floor boss runs away. But there's a rule for floor bosses apparently. Each person is given a floor and then they, and they only can kill people only on their floor. So that makes me wonder, was Rachel had her own floor or she was just a player or an experiment a part of it or something? And I also go for Zach, did Zach also have his own floor? Because remember, Zach was probably going around trying to kill things as well. So could it be that Zach once had his own floor but he doesn't anymore? I don't know, it depends, I need more understanding I guess about what's going on with these two main characters. So I can at least accept something out of the show, you know. The show seems to be so far very slow pace because it's not trying to rush things like other that one game anime based on the game Quartz Party did. Only it's four episodes. But anyways, this episode was very I said mixed feelings. 
it was a very back and forth. It was very repetitive, you know. It was one Rachel kept saying, yeah, you swear the guy that you'll kill me. You swear you promise. And then on the other side, it's Eddie that keeps talking about love, mutual love. Will you let me kill you? And Rachel deciding how she wants to die. So the question is, is would she let Eddie kill her if Zach didn't say he swear to God? That is the main question. So right now I have a lot of theories. My mind's all over the place with this episode, this show as an entire whole. Right now I have some YouTubers that I'm subscribed to that are even playing last plays of this game just because the anime is out for it to see what it's about and they probably have better detail of it because the game will show more than the anime will. But I said nope. Just like Caligula, I will not play the game until I watch the anime. Because I realized something. When I play the game or something, then I watch the anime to it, I am very, very disappointed. But if I watch the anime, then play the game, then I'm like, wow, this is actually a better experience. It's very good that way. Only exception is Akiba's trip because they completely changed the script and also the character. So it was a completely different show from the game. So that's acceptable. Same with Devil May Cry, I guess, because it was a continuation, I guess, after Devil May Cry 1. So we have that. Now, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much. These um, Angels of Death, despite it being the same old time as any other anime, so far, it's very slow pace, but yet at the same time, not much really happens in each episode. They seem to stick on a topic, and then that's pretty much it. So, not much going on, you know. So, what about Happy Sugar Life? We all know it also comes out the same day as Angels of Death. So, well, I decided to do a schedule here, you know, to expand my review day. Because, you know, the only things I'm reviewing are only coming out on Fridays and Sundays. And that is on Fridays, it's Angels of Death and Happy Sugar Life. And on Sundays, it's High School Girl and um, Island. So however, the last two of each day comes out very late. So I'm gonna do this. Friday, I review Angels of Death. Saturday, I review Happy Sugar Life. Sunday, I review High School Girl. And finally, Monday, because Islands come out really late, like, even, usually all the anime's out by the time I get home from work, but no, not this time. It's actually, um, it comes out even after I come from home from work. So, I'm going to review Island on Monday. So yes, poor things. And I guess I'll figure what to do. I'll probably get back to playing Jack and Daxter again, streaming it on YouTube, and talk about some other things that we're talking about with the geek community itself. So yes, that's what I got for this episode. Um, Angels of Death, man. Do you think it's slow pace? Do you think it's doing right by the gaming adaption? I want to know. I haven't played the game yet. It's where on my life. Um, animation's still good, at least. Music's still good. Um, the characters are still intriguing. It's just that I just wish it wouldn't be so repetitive right now. I will have to admit that. But yes, I will still review the series to the very end, so I can see what's the true secret behind all this craziness. So yes, that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. Anyways, I have been Macro on Anime, and I'm signing out. Have a good one, guys.